Should you sit the UCAT or the GAMSAT, or even both? Many students ask this question, and it's a really important question because depending on what you choose, this will affect the number of medical or dental schools that you can apply to. My name is Daniela, and I am a third year graduate entry medic at the University of Warwick. I'm also the head of admissions at FutureDoc. I also recently made a video about my personal experience with sitting the GAMSAT, so if you're interested in watching that, then check out this video up here. The decision to sit either the UCAT or the GAMSAT is a very personal one, and it depends on many different things, including your career goals, the medical or dental schools that you're applying to, as well as your previous experience and your background. If you have sat one of these exams before, then you are much more likely to reset that exam because you're already familiar with the content and the style of it. One of the first things to consider when you're trying to decide is, do you hold a degree already? Now, this is really important because if you have a bachelor's degree, regardless of whether you're applying to a graduate entry course or an undergraduate course, you would still be considered as a graduate entry applicant. This means that you'd be able to take both the UCAT and the GAMSAT and obviously apply to graduate entry courses. However, if you do not hold a degree, you are considered an undergraduate student, which means that you'll only be applying to undergraduate courses and it makes it much more likely that you're only going to be sitting the UCAT exam. So the next thing that you'd probably need to consider is the medical or the dental schools that you are applying to. It's so, so important that you take your time to research each of the universities and find out what their minimum entry requirements are. If you are set on applying to graduate entry medicine at somewhere like Swansea, then you are going to need to sit the GAMSAT, for example. Also, it's important to know that some schools accept both the UCAT and the GAMSAT at, so you can be a little bit flexible and you can then choose to sit the one which is best for you. In any case, it's so important that you reach out to the universities, that you check the website so that you know what the minimum entry requirements are. Once you've done that, I would then assess your strengths and your weaknesses. You want to find out what you're good at so that you can capitalize on that. The GAMSAT and the UCAT are both very different exams. The GAMSAT focuses a bit more on scientific and humanities knowledge, whereas the UCAT places a little bit more emphasis on your cognitive abilities. So if there's one that you feel that you're better at, at, then you might want to stick with that exam. It's also really important to consider the amount of time that you'll have to prepare for the exam. Again, if you've sat one of those exams already, then you might need less time to prepare because you'll already be familiar with it. Both exams though are very different, but they each do require very thorough preparation. So making sure that you give yourself enough time is super important. Cost might be another factor for you to consider. Unfortunately, taking these exams is not free. They each have a registration fee and you might also want to take into account travel costs if you need to travel to an exam center, for example. Also, you may need to purchase preparation materials. So again, another cost to bear in mind. So if you are trying to decide whether to sit the UCAT or the GAMSAT, my advice to you would be to consider asking an advisor, someone who is an academic advisor or a careers counselor or a professional in the field, because that way you're going to be guided by someone who has experience and they can coach you on your individual circumstances. That is exactly what we do and what we have a lot of experience with here at FutureDoc. So if you're interested, do check out our website. Secondly, I'd also really encourage to look at the practice tests that are available for each of the exams. They both have their official websites with official past papers, so I'd encourage you to take a look through them and to try out some of the questions so that you can get a feel for the content and the question style that you may see. This is going to help you to gauge your comfort level with each exam and then you can choose which one works best for you. Ultimately, the decision to sit either exam or both is yours and again will depend on so many different factors, but really make sure that you have thought about it, that you have taken your time to research it properly before coming to a decision. If you aren't sure of what the differences are between the two exams, then check out this playlist where we have designed videos specifically to give you all of the information that you need. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this useful and I'll see you next time.